What's up, folks? Happy holidays. No big weird lead-ups like usual. I've decided to stop doing that. Seems like a bad choice. Welcome to uh, Binging with, uh, Basics with Babish Live. I'll get it right one of these days. How we doing? How's everybody's preamble to their holiday? Hey, what's up, folks? I see we have, or we already have a super chat here. I wanted to, uh, let's see, um, I've got the munchies, A, take my money, says Patrick Wen. All right, thank you, I will. But I'm not taking your money this time because, uh, as you might see at the bottom of the screen right here, um, uh, 100% of my Super Chat revenue is going to St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen here in New York City. It's a place where I like to volunteer on the weekends. Um, they do really great work serving hundreds of people. They're going to be serving a lot of people this time of year, and they can use all the help we can give them. So. All your super chats, thank you already. We've got uh, $10 from Son of a Pizza Man. I remember you, Son of a Pizza Man. Uh, can I get another shout out for my channel? Son of a Pizza Man, How, how's three for you? Uh, we got a new member. We got Boom Headshot 007. Thank you for joining. Um, I just saw one here. I got a $2 super chat from, or two pound super chat, so a $4 super chat from Ethan Milner. How you doing, Babby? I'm doing good. Thank you for your contribution. And just to, uh, get things going here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a super chat. Uh, let's see, and I'm going to make it for a bunch. And let's see, chat revenue. Sorry, one second, folks. My super chat's revenue goes to St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen. There we go. And go. See if that works. Been curious about this. Yep, all right, that's my credit card. <laughs> I hope nobody can see this right now. Oh dear. Oh, do I have to do like PayPal or something? Oh god. All right, let's see if I remember my, um, my three digit code. Oh no, I got it wrong. Okay, shit. <laughs> so, Jake, can you. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll, we'll figure this out, but we'll figure this out later. But um, all right, we got uh, a 10 euro contribution from Tio Cherry C. Trying out your smoky punch tomorrow. Love your channel. Thanks, man. Give it a shot. Hope you like it. It's not mine, though. I got that recipe from Serious Eats, a great food blog. If you haven't checked it out already, a lot of great information there. Good people, good writing. $5 from April McCain. Good cause. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for contributing. Uh, people will be very grateful. Um, it's a really, it is a very good cause and people are going to benefit from it. How can you super, not super chat if it's for a good cause, says Cookout Coach. Thank you so much, Cookout Coach. $5 every little bit helps during the holidays, says Emily Brennan. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to keep up with these in a few minutes. Um, I really want to uh, try and get mine going. Um, I'm, I'm going to try one more time. Jake, is there any chance you can run into my bedroom and get my wallet out of my jeans? <laughs> they're, they're on my bed. <laughs> this is some, some weird uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, that's, uh, for those of you who don't know, in the other room, we've got Sawyer Jacobs, my, the Roz to my Frasier. Uh, he is administrating the chat and making sure everything goes smoothly. He's also my business partner and dear friend, best friend. Um, and uh, uh, he's getting my wallet for me right now so I can try and, and make my own little contribution to this cause. I don't want you guys to be the only ones giving to this very worthy cause. There we go. There's the wallet. I think that's the wrong card. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Okay. Well, this will work, but I'm just going to have to enter in my card information. Okay, here we go. Oh, we got a lot coming in here. Oh, geez. Okay. I can't really keep up, keep up with these, but... Uh, KW King 2713 says, yeah, don't read this, but gives $20 to the cause. Thank you so much, KW King. Oh, I should not have my, my credit card visible. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, $40 from um, Leighton Buchanan Cates. Uh, so glad to hear about you donating in the soup kitchen in New York City. Love your channel. Food is honestly never looks sexier. Thank you so much, Leighton. It's very kind. And thank you for your extremely generous donation. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my money where my mouth is here. Hang on a sec. Um, and I'm going to try to do it without exposing my frickin' credit card to everybody. Uh, all super chat revenue goes to St. Joe's Soup Soup Kitchen. It's a great place. A lot of really good people there. I'm going to max this out. Here we go. 
I just have to enter in a new credit card now, which I'm sure you guys were really looking forward to watching me do. Um, here we go. I'm going to do this as fast as possible. Um, it's so nerve-wracking to be entering payment information while thousands of people are watching. Like, I'm, I'm fighting every urge right now to read this card number out loud as I type it. I will not do it. Um, let's see. And then... Da, da, da. And... Wow, that's an old zip code. Okay, here we go. And bye. Come on. Work. Work so I can get back to entertaining people and they don't have to watch me make an online purchase. There we go. All right, that went through. Okay. So, everybody... Th wow, we've already gotten more donations while we were waiting. Let's see. We got Shelby Mc McComick. Here's St. Joe's. Thank you so much, Shelby. Thank you, Downhill Media, $20. Thank you so much. Um, I do a comedy art explainer show called Art Splained. I've heard of that. Uh, I haven't watched it, but uh, Art Splained. Go, go check it out. Thank you very much for the very um, generous donation. Um, we got uh, 50 NOK, whatever that is. Thank you so much, Anakin. Anakin, not, not like the Star Wars Anakin, like Ann, A-N-N-I-K-E-N. -E uh, thank you so much for your contribution. Love what you're doing, Babish. First time donating. Thought it was a good, good cause. Fond. I saw everybody saying Fond before. What's, uh, what's, what's up? Like, I mean, obviously I love Fond as much as the next guy, but what got that started? I just saw like a million Fonds. Um, all right, we got more donations pouring in here. Kaz Per Jester, thank you. Rochester Expat here as well. Ro uh, Russell Schroeder, uh, thank you. Rochester, good looking out. We got two Rochester natives right here. For anybody who's just joining us, it is me, Andrew Ray, and Sawyer Jacobs in the other room, my best friend, business partner, and the uh, moderator of this chat. Everybody say hi to Sawyer. Hey, everybody. Um, so happy to be here. Love the uh, fond. Yeah, we all love fond over here. This is a fond house. Fort Nixon gave $10 for the soup. Thank you. Martin Fuhrer. A lot of stuff. No soup for you. Let's see if we can, uh, I don't know what records are, but let's see if we can break some kind of record. I don't know. Um, I want St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen to be thoroughly surprised when they look in their inbox tomorrow morning or whenever I find out what the total till was. I think I find out in about 24 hours, so I will, as soon as I find out, I'll be kicking it over there. Um, I think asking your coworkers, even friends, to go through, to go through your pants is against HR laws. Oh, 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 I see. No, yeah, uh, no, that doesn't apply in this. <laughs> I'm the head of HR, so I set those rules. I know it's, there's laws and whatever, but uh, um, I just gave him express permission to, um, to go through my pants. Uh, uh, <laughs> my, he, he's, what m people might not realize is that this is my apartment, and uh, my bed is right over there. Like, Sawyer is, is working on the chat, like, inches from my bed. Um, it's all over there. I can't keep up with everybody giving money. Everybody who's, who's giving Super Chats, thank you so much. Uh, it's going to a very worthy cause. St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen does some great stuff here in New York. They serve hundreds of meals um, uh, uh, every weekend at, at their Saturday Soup Kitchen. Uh, you can go there and volunteer. I go there and volunteer whenever I can. Um, and they're going to be serving tons and tons of meals uh, come, come the, over, over the holidays. And um, they're really going to appreciate all these extremely generous donations. Um, Marcos Martinez, love the channel, happy holidays, thank you so much. Luke Donovan, $20, thank you. Uh, want to cater my wedding? Uh, just email bingingwithbabish at gmail.com, let's talk. Um, but, let's see. All right, I mean, it's nice, okay. People, some people are plugging their, their websites, that's fine, thank you, it's for a very good, good cause. Um, so go ahead and plug, plug your website, plug your channel. Just the, the only rule is you got to give some money to a, good, to, to a soup kitchen that's doing some great stuff. Um, how is everybody's holiday? Everybody off to a good start? I know that I'm heading home um, in a couple days and I need a drink. So why don't we get started on making some stuff here? Uh, I just want to give one more big blanket thank you to everybody who's giving money. I can't keep up with all of them here. There's a ton of them. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I just saw one, so I'll just read it. Uh, here's a donation. You're my favorite channel. Happy holidays from Runic Enchanter. Thank you so much, Runic Enchanter. Um, come to Chicago. I was just in Chicago a couple weeks ago. Um, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to get wasted in the middle of the night. Okay. 
I think uh, this Brian Sue, Sue fellow needs to be put on slow mode here. I'm going to go ahead and put him in timeout. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. We got so many inappropriate messages. It's not very nice. Um, okay. All right. Uh, cool. Let's get, to, let's get to making some drinks, folks. Which one should we start with here? We got to start with the smoky rum punch because there's a couple steps involved. So let's start with the most, uh, the one that needs to sit the longest, which is probably going to be the tea because it, it needs to steep and then it needs to cool off. So behind me here, I got my kettle. I'm going to crank that on and I'm going to grab my big cup measure because we want about four cups of Lapsang tea. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I have to run off camera and get the Lapsang. And I'm getting a call from some weird number. I don't feel like dealing with it. Um, Jake, do you still have Lapsang in there? I don't know where the rest of it is. Yeah, right, I believe I have some Lapsang, lapsang in my desk. Hold on a second. Let me check. All right. Sweet. Thank you. I bought way too much Lapsang, and now I can't find it. Um, okay. We'll figure this out. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so here we go. We got our lap saying this is a super smoky tea. This stuff tastes like smoke. It's crazy. Um, so I'm gonna do like probably four bags. We got four cups of water incoming. I'm going to go ahead and send you the voicemail one eight hundred. There we go. And I'm going to make a big old pot of lap saying here. That's gonna be where all the not all the smoke, but some of it. I do a couple things different from the, from the Serious Eats version. I uh, torch my herbs, which I'm also doing another thing different. Normally this is made with sage, but I, I, I don't have any sage right now. I couldn't find any at the grocery store. So I got a little bit of rosemary out of the garden over here. Uh, and this is going to be really nice, especially torched. I was at a... Anybody ever been to Sleep No More? That's um, funky uh, uh, interactive... Uh, um, uh, Shakespeare pr production here in New York City, they have a cocktail there where they literally would torch rosemary and put it out in your drink. And it just imbued it with all this smoky rosemary flavor and unfortunately bits of rosemary. That was one of the, the, the downsides of that method, but um, it's, uh, it was still like super interesting and uh, really tasty. So I'm just tying up all these tea bags here so we can have a nice strong brew and then we also need to make the smoked uh, in this case rosemary instead of sage we need to make smoked say smoked rosemary simple syrup this stuff is extremely versatile uh, it goes great in a number of cocktails it goes you know you could make an old-fashioned with it add it instead of you know a sugar cube or the normal um, ah, the, the normal uh, what's it called uh, uh, um, uh, simple syrup and it's going to just bring a whole new world of flavor there especially if you have like a cheap bourbon that you're working with and you don't want to you want to jazz it up a little bit what are people saying here we got more donations thank you guys so much Tina $20 thank you Tina Silverman uh, Lady Nikki uh, gave $10 thank you um, let's see Nicholas Day I can't pronounce that happy Holly's baby thank you and uh, thank you guys all so much if I miss if I miss you, I'm very sorry. Fifteen dollars from Alex James Cross. Um, he's asking. He's got a question. Is there any benefit to your Vulcan stove needing to be lit manually? No, there is not. Um, this um, this stove has. It's a commercial stove, so it's got a big old hot nasty pilot light. Um, it's it's like this giant, really powerful pilot light. So if you leave it lit, this whole kitchen gets wicked hot. Uh, even that right now in the winter in the middle of this storm. I'm really hoping that we don't have a power outage or an internet outage in the middle of this stream, by the way. If we disappear, it's because there's a massive storm approaching New York City right now, and we might get knocked into the dark ages. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's a very popular, popular, very powerful pilot light. Um, it's a very popular pilot light, and it just heats up their whole room. So we shut it off, and now you have to light it manually. The only pilot light that's on in here is the one in the, in the, in the oven itself, and it's so hot that it keeps the oven, even when it's off, the oven is like ambient 175 degrees. Um, so it just heats up the whole room. But anyway, that's a long-winded answer to your question. I'm going to go back to this here. We got 
Tina, thank you. We got $30 from Andrew Miller. Um, can, okay, we got, we, right now the top super chat is saying that I should turn up my volume. What do we think, guys? How's the, how's the audio? Are you hearing any, any low volume complaints, Jake? Are you seeing anything? I'm not seeing anything. But uh, All right, we'll I see what they say to, to the. Let's see what they say to the shout out. Um, I'm seeing some lag complaints. Hmm. Well, you know, we have a new, we have a new internet set up here. Maybe there's some some issues there. Sorry, uh, sorry for any technical issues we're having. Big storm in New York City tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and blame it on that. Um, all right, we got our water coming to boil to a boil back here. Coming to the boil. That is the right way to say it. Apparently, not a boil, but the boil. Um, make sure my mic is out of the way here. There we go. All right, people are saying it's good. People, some people are saying turn it up. So yeah, just a little turn up would be great. Um, okay, let's, once we got this done, we'll make our simple syrup. And then while those guys are hanging out and steeping and getting ready, uh, we will go ahead and, and um, do the next thing, which is I think we're probably gonna make some eggnog. I think that's probably the way to go. Um, a lot of fonts. I'm seeing so much fun. Um, snow is not a four letter, letter word. Get on my level. All right, we got boiling water back here. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it right into my Pyrex. We want four cups of Lapsang tea. Pour it all over the tea bags, make sure they get nice and... How is this leaking? It's made of metal. Oh, it was coming out the lid. Okay. I was like, what the hell did I do to deserve this? Okay. Four cups it is. Perfect. Okay. While that steeps, Jake, let's head on over to camera two where we're going to make some simple syrup. Here we go, folks. One, two, three. Now we're over here. All right. Is that, fo that focus a little soft? I'm just going to whoop. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to make some simple syrup. And the simplest way to make simple syrup is to combine equal parts water and sugar. So a cup of water to a cup of sugar. Start with one cup of sugar over here. And I'm sorry, I'm, uh, whenever I'm over here at the stove, guys, I can't see the chat. I can't see what's going on. So I'm sorry if I'm missing anything cool or if I'm missing any generous donations. Um, I'll be back momentarily. And so now we've got uh, a cup of sugar in there. Let me go ahead and add a cup of water. You're just missing everybody compliment my, uh, my ability to switch cameras. Oh, I mean, you know, guys, Sora's... Sora didn't go to school for this like I did, but he's got street smarts, okay? He's really, you know. I'm learning um, on the job. He's le <laughs> um, all right, so now that we got those combined there, I'm gonna go ahead and grab everybody's favorite American hero, Tiny Whisk. This gotta be Tiny Whisk's first appearance in a live stream. Did, has he ever hung out in a live stream before? There have been requests, but I don't think his services have well, ever been needed. Here he is, and I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. He is not the only one. I have a few of these. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sorry if we all thought of him as one single entity, but um, that's not the way the world works, unfortunately. You've got to have doubles. That's why every time uh, there's a little kid in a movie or a TV show, they always hire twins in case one of them... Uh, dies. I'm kidding. No, in, always. In case one of, yeah. <laughs> always uh, no, twins. Just, the, but they usually do use twins in case one of them's being, you know, having a fit or, or not being cooperative. They got the other one. Andrew uh, is actually a twin. Yeah, I'm a twin. Show him, uh, sh switch over to camera one. You'll see my twin where he's not uh, doing the thing. Twins actually playing hey. Switch right now. Yeah, oh, uh, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew up my spot. <laughs> um, no, I, I, w I wish that I had a twin who could play Switch, because then we could we could we could play Switch together, <laughs> and it would be weird and be very strange. We'd know all each other's moves, like one of those movies, like uh, at the end of uh, Captain America: um, Civil War. Okay, so I could really turn the heat on here. I don't know why I'm doing this with no heat. <laughs> Much easier with some heat on. Um, it's clearly just, just coming back up to speed here. Gotta, gotta, gotta get the old, the old brain banging on all cylinders. Um, so 
I'm just gonna stir this together. We just wanna mix it until it dissolves. Um, who the hell is that? Is Brett, oh, okay, can, uh, can I'll, you get, get him? him? I'll get him. All right, thanks. We got uh, a, a friend of ours, uh, Evan Brody, coming over right now. Uh, he doesn't know that he's about to be on a live stream in front of a lot of people, so that's going to be an interesting. Let's see what let's see what he how he reacts to, uh, to that. But he's no stranger to the stage. Not at all. What was the name of his band again? Family Portrait. Family Portrait. Oh, oh yeah, he was the singer in your band. Sawyer was in a band called uh, and is I guess uh, in a band called uh, Family Portrait. Go check him out on Spotify. Family Portrait, everybody. Uh, and the lead singer of that band is headed over right now. Sawyer, I believe, played bass? Yeah, yeah Sawyer played bass in Family Portrait and was the owner of the label uh, that they were a part of right. called Underwater Peoples. I'm going to go back to Matt. Hopefully he'll... All right. All right. I'll, I'll brief him when he comes in the room. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You guys are getting the full uh, uh, Babish comic universe here, the BCU. Um, so the BCEU will come out in 2019. We have a very... Very exciting addition to the team that I can't talk about yet, but you guys can expect some big changes and some big things pretty immediately in 2019. We're working on a new show. Um, I am not going to say what it is yet, but uh, get hyped because it's going to be a lot of fun and I think you guys are going to really like it. And it's being made by somebody that I think you're all going to be familiar with and be fans of. Um, and, uh, it's, it's going to surprise you, I think. I think, I think that we got some, some big surprises coming in, in 2019 that you might just not expect. And if you're not careful, you just might learn something. Okay. So this guy is going to come to a boil. As soon as he comes to a boil, I'm going to tor torch the, uh, rosemary over here and grab the rosemary just so it's ready to go. In fact, I'm going to use tongs so I don't burn my fingers right off on the internet in front of everybody and yeah as soon as this comes to a simmer which it almost is actually no we, we need to we need to let this boil for like five minutes i think we needed to reduce a little bit if i remember correctly how do you do this let me let me double check my uh <laughs> double check my good old directions here da, 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 da. um Okay, all right, so never mind. We want this to simmer for 20 minutes with the rosemary inside. So let me torch it now. This is always fun to watch. Oops, I dropped one. That's okay. 30 second rule or however long it was on the floor for. Let me just make sure these are all gripped. Shouldn't he be here by now? All right, here we go. Now we're going to torch us a little bit of rosemary. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, doggy. There we go. All right. I don't want to burn it all off. I just want to get some smoky kind of stuff going here. All right, that's good. I like that. I like that. And then in it goes. And I'm just gonna tuck it in there. And we're gonna let that simmer for like 20 minutes. There we go. Hmm. It's a really interesting smell. I should say good. 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 It, it is definitely a good smell. But it's also an interesting smell. Um, let's see here. And then, you know, actually, I'm just realizing right now that I underdid the water. You're supposed to do a two to one, two to one ratio of water to sugar. So let me add another cup of water here. Sorry about that, folks. I completely forgot. I was wondering why it was so thick looking already. Like, that's a little bit too fast. So no, no harm, no foul. You can add another... Another cup of water, no problem. Grab your backup tiny whisk, your twin tiny whisk. Give it a little, little whiskeroo there. And we're going to let that simmer for 20 minutes. There we go. Okay, and now let's head back over to camera one. This tea, tea is looking pretty steeped. Um, I'm going to give it like two more minutes. I want it to be very, very strong. I want a nice, nice smoky... Smoky, whatever. Oh, wow. We have a $100 super chat from Darth Ripper. Uh, I've enjoyed your videos, Babish. I'd be happy to help towards a good cause. Stay safe, during, stay, stay safe during the storm. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Darth Ripper. That is very, very generous. Really appreciate it. 
20 New Zealander dollars from uh, Jonathan Reapin. Uh, I think he might have missed the elevator, dude. It's because uh, he should be up here by now. Uh, he it might not have been him because it's still an early before he was supposed to get here. Okay, I wonder if it was uh, Amazon. It was the thief. Um, we think I think we have a thief in my building. Um, I just let up the thief. Four, oh, great. Uh, we got fourteen ninety nine from Bobby Laird. Uh, have you considered doing live shows, possibly on the West Coast? Absolutely. And um, my new book is coming out in Q4 of 2019, in fall of 2019, so Q3, I guess. Um, and um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to organize a book tour. Again, details that I can't speak to yet, but uh, I, a very cool, very exciting book tour that I think you guys will, will really enjoy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that that started boiling at about 6.25, and so that means in about uh, 15 minutes, uh, we, we, let me turn down the heat a little bit here. We just want this at a nice little righteous simmer. And normally we'd want to like cover this and let it steep for like an hour after simmering, but we don't got that kind of time. And it's going to have plenty of that rosemary, smoky rosemary flavor, but you, to really maximize the flavor, you, you, you want to let it steep for a while because it is pretty mild. Um, but even if we only get, just get a little bit of flavor, it's going to be, it's going to be really nice. Um, uh, so, yes, thank you very much. Oh, wait, we have another generous donation over here, another generous benefactor. Uh, let's see, we got $10 from Andrew Miller again. I remember, I remember you from before. Thanks again, man. You should make an episode called Beards with Babish, all about what and how you care for your beard. Well, I say this every show, and I'll say it again, which is my beard care regimen is simple. Um, it is sh uh, trim, shampoo, condition, oil, brush. Daily, 100, 100 brush strokes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hundred brush strokes every day. Keep it soft. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it under control, fellows. Okay. Let's move the focus of this camera a little bit. There we go. All right. So I guess uh, it's nog time. I'm gonna close the door here because it's making me uncomfortable. Okay. And I'm gonna grab the booze, which is still in a bag over here because I forgot about it. Okay, so for the punch, I got some Brooklyn gin here. This is a really nice American gin. I assume it's American because it says Brooklyn gin. Um, it'd be weird if it was from like London or something. Um, and then we got Pierre Ferrand, which I'm sure I'm butchering because I can't do French pronunciation to save my life except when I practice a million times over before my voiceover. Uh, and this is a really, really nice cognac. You know, it's pretty expensive for making cocktails. At least in New York, this is like 45 bucks, which to me means that everywhere else in the country, it's like 35 bucks. So I guess that's not that bad for making cocktails, but it is still a little bit on the high end, but it's worth it. Like eggnog is one of those, one of those cocktails that really lets the alcohol sing. You've definitely got other flavors going on there but all the richness from the cream means that you really want something that isn't harsh and doesn't have a lot of bite to it. Um, all right, let me lose all this label here. Plus, I have a bottle of Champers that I want to open up later on, so don't let me drink too much of this stuff, okay? Okay, good. All right, I mangled that. That was a mistake. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, pretend you didn't see that. I just didn't want, want to cut my fingies on the foil. Okay, um... So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make um, we're gonna make uh, Greg's eggnog from How to Drink. Uh, so Greg, if you guys watched this episode, Greg was the fellow from How to Drink. Greg, uh, how do you say his last name? Titian, Titian, Titian. Well, whatever. It's a very big manly last name, and and uh, he's a he's a manly man, and he taught me how to make a manly eggnog. He called it country bumpkin country bumpkin eggnog. And it's a modernized version of Jerry Thomas's Baltimore eggnog, which is a is a, an eggnog of yore, and it's pretty funky. So I wasn't like super crazy about it, but he did teach me a bunch of things here. Um, first is to uh, we're going to dry shake this. Um, dry shaking is the act of shaking your cocktail ingredients without ice, and that's going to help apparently emulsify the egg and uh, just help this get a little bit creamier down the line. So that means we're gonna start with no ice. I'm just gonna grab my measure here. And in this shaker, we're going to combine 
a little bit of bourbon, a little bit of cognac, and a little bit of, I believe he put some of this Luxardo maraschino liqueur in there. Let's line these all up in a pretty little line. Beautiful. Uh, let's get this nice and centered. Come on. Come on, Andy. You can do better than this. Oh, this, this looks great. Okay. Sorry, I'm such a sucker. If you guys haven't seen the show or anything, I'm a, kind of a sucker for symmetry. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Okay, I'm going to stop messing around. We are... Actually, I actually have some open bourbon. Let's, let's not open up the basils yet. We can, we can use the rest of this. All right, we need two ounces of bourbon. I believe, yes, he made his very bourbon heavy. heavy. We got two ounces here. So I'm gonna, oh, exactly enough left. Look at that, wow. Whoa, I just spilled it everywhere, just like him. <laughs> it's a natural part of making cocktails, apparently, is you, you just spill it everywhere. I don't know why they don't make these things a little bit more like user-friendly. It's very hard to keep it all in there. Okay, uh, so we got two ounces of bourbon. We need a half ounce of cognac. So this guy. This is one ounce, there's a half ounce. I'm sorry, I've never used this measure before. Half ounce of cognac. Let me go a little heavier on the cognac, there we go. Half ounce of cognac, uh, half ounce of Luxardo maraschino liqueur, which I can't remember if this is the byproduct of maraschino cherries or if it's the stuff that they make maraschino cherries in. I think it's the stuff that they make maraschino cherries in. Uh, it is very clear, and it does taste. It does smell a little bit like cherries, but you know, it just goes to show that Greg knows what he's talking about, and I don't. Um, but he and I are so similar in ways that I never would have imagined. Uh, he, too, is a filmmaker, and he works in post production right now, and is just making um, how to drink as a passion project, and it's so beautiful. It's got to be one of the most beautiful shows on YouTube, um, it's so well shot. They shoot everything on red with cinema lenses and with that amazing slow-mo and they have that awesome set that they built. Like, it's such a cool show and I just love that he's just doing it out of the goodness of his heart. <laughs> like, he's just doing it because he loves it. And that's where great YouTube shows are made. And happily, he's experiencing this incredible blow-up of subscribership and viewership on his channel. God bless him. Um, all right, we got uh, some more very generous donations here. We've got $169.99 New Zealander dollars from uh, Patrick Wen, donations for Tiny Whisk's family. Uh, Chantel, Chantel Witter gave 30 Canadian dollars. Uh, thank you so much. Guys, for anybody who's just joining us, um, all the Super Chat, and you can see at the bottom, all the Super Chat revenue, all my Super Chat revenue, YouTube is still going to take their cut, but I'm going to give my cut of the Super Chat revenue to St. Joe's, St. Joe's Soup Kitchen, St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen in the East Village here in New York City. They are a wonderful organization. They're a great place to volunteer, and they're going to be giving a lot of meals to a lot of people who need it uh, this holiday season. So, God bless them. All right, half an ounce of Simple. Whoop. There we go. I'm going to dump this straight into the sink, or I'm just going to bring it over to the sink so it's not le leaking sugar water everywhere. That stuff gets sticky. Okay, simple's out of the way. How are we doing on time? We need 10 more minutes on that, on our, on our simple syrup. Let me get all these bottles out of here. And the last thing we need is... We need the one more thing, which is the egg. We need egg. Egg, 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 egg. There we go. These are good eggs. I like these eggs. Pete and Jerry's. Good eggs. You know, it's it's nice to get one of those eggs with a really, you know, fire burst orange uh, yolk. It's kind of a little bit hard to, to come by. Some of the, like, Pete and Jerry's I find are like half, you know, piss yellow and half uh, really nice orange. Um, so... Let me just make sure that's all we're putting in there. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I need fresh nutmeg eventually. Uh, and then, okay. Okay. All right, he tops it up with milk. I forgot about that. Okay. So, oh, and one more thing I just need is the nutmeg and an orange. So let me just grab nutmeg real quick. 
I just have it right over here on my spice rack just off camera, which is not totally convenient. Here we go. Got my nutmeg. I only got one, one nutmeg nut left. What's up? Uh, off camera and it scared me. Oh, oh God. No, it's right there. The butter caught it. We're good. <laughs> Thank you for your concern. All right, we got our one nutmeg nut left, if that's what you call it. I really don't know what you call those. Got my zester, or my microplane, rather. All right, so now I'm just going to see if I can do this with one hand for the folks. You know, I, d I try to show me cracking eggs with one hand on the show as much as possible, but uh, the reality is that I'd say one out of every three times I'm cracking shell in there and I'm, I'm breaking the yolk and all that good stuff. So there we go. That's a nice, clean break. Beautiful. Just wash my hand a little bit. Whew, glad I didn't screw that up. Glad they can't hear me right now. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Um, so, all right, we got everything in there, I believe, yeah. So we're just closing that up. Ideally, you want to use a Boston shaker, which is just the two glasses, but I don't know where mine is right now. We just had everything torn up and put back together because we we did all the photography for my new cookbook right here in my apartment, right over there uh, in that corner of the room. And I had, you know, a couple cooks in here. I had the food stylist, I had the photographer, and everything got torn up and put back together. So a bunch of things are missing. I don't know where they are. And my Boston shaker is one of them. So I'm just going to make sure that that's good and emulsified. There we go. Make sure that this guy isn't holding any secrets up here. There we go. Good stuff. Good. Okay, and now we're gonna shake it over ice. It's nice and nice and frothy. It's exactly what we want. And I'm just gonna dump a bunch of ice in there. Seeing how good Greg's cocktails came out, despite how like you know goofy and aloof he was being about it, really, really grew my confidence in the kitchen um, or in the you know in the, at, the, at the bar. Because I do enjoy a drink, but I always wondered like, am I doing this right? You know, would Greg be proud? And really, you know, it's just about. Like he says on the show, if, 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 the, if at the end of the day, if the drink is in the glass, you did your job right. So, and that's true, you know, it, you're the only one who can tell if you made your drink correctly. <laughs> if you like it, then guess what? You made it right. Don't let any, don't let any snob tell you you did it wrong just because you didn't make it, you didn't make it their way or you didn't make it the textbook right way. All right, let's see if this looks right. That's looking right to me. That's got that eggy yellow appearance. Let's get that all out of there. All of it now. I think I picked too big a glass, but that's okay. I'm just gonna just get it all out of there. Come on. You can do it. Do, do, do. Come on. There we go. Out we go. Da, da, da. This thing doesn't drain very well. It smells right, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Yeah, this one's very good. Okay. And then next up comes some half and half. There we go. Give this a little shake -a And let's see. Thank you guys. I see a few new super chats there. Thank you very much for your generosity for a very good cause. I'm going to dilute this by about half. I chose way too big a, a glass for this. It's okay. Remember? What I said before about <laughs> that being fine. It's fine. Oh, it looks so nice and creamy. I do wish I could give it a little stir, but he just poured it in there and it was fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and grate a little nutmeg over top. That is like the most important part of eggnog. I'm telling you, you wouldn't have eggnog without nutmeg. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I'm also going to do what he did, which is grate a little orange zest over top. I got these nice oranges in here. Good looking oranges. Here we go. Let's get a little, little of that going. Just a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm it. There we go. And there you have it. Greg's, uh, Greg from How to Drink, Greg's uh, Hillbilly Eggnog. Um, or I'll just call it Greg's, G Greg Nog. That's what he called it, Greg Nog, which is just brilliant. I mean, come on. Uh, so cheers, guys. Happy holidays. To the first of several several drinks tonight. Um, we're going to be doing this. We got uh, our simple syrup going over there. In fact, it's... Um, oh, 
in two minutes it's going to be done simmering. We're just going to shut it down and let it cool off. Uh, but cheers, guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for your very generous donations. I'm seeing lots of, of, of very uh, generous um, super chats. I'm very sorry for missing any of them. All of my uh, revenue from super chats tonight is going to St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen here in the East Village. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, so nice. All you smell when you're drinking it, all you smell is the orange zest. So you're just like, wow, I'm about to dig into this orange juice. And then it just, it mellows right down. And all you get is like that classic eggnog flavor with a little hit of, of mild citrus, no acidity. Cause it's just, um, it's just zest. So it's just that orange flavor with no, with no acidity. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I am not Lactose intolerant, but I'm, I'm, I'm not like great with it. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to Sawyer. Uh, Sawyer, you want to come in? The, do you want this? Yes, I want that. All right, come on in here. We're, we're, um, we're very close. He doesn't mind drinking out of the same glass as I do. Cheers. Tell me what you think. Tell me if it reminds you of uh, Greg's. Mm, Good stuff? Yeah. 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 It's... Uh, it's really trippy to hear myself talk right next yeah. to you. We're, we're in a dump. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers. Mine. Yeah, here. Cheers. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have more stuff for you soon. Okay, I think our simple is done. So, Jake, as soon as you get back, if you could uh, switch over to camera two. Here we go. Three, two, one. Bow. Did he get it, ladies and, ladies and gents? Okay. So... <laughs> I'm not going to let this steep. Like I said before, I'm not going to let it steep because we, well, we just don't have time. Um, so I'm going to grab a big old measuring cup here and I'm going to strain the rosemary out of it and reserve the liquid, which is our burnt rosemary simple syrup. Here we go. And there we go. You see, it's got this nice color to it. Um, simple, simple syrup definitely takes on like a little bit of a yellowish hue. But this is, it's almost green from all the uh, veg vegetation that we've got going on in there. So let me just get all the egg off my hand here. I also need more paper towels. I'm sorry, folks. Let me just grab some paper towels from down here. There we go. I wish we had a, like a mobile camera so I could give you guys like a tour of the whole place. Okay. Soon. There we go. Soon. Soon. One day. Yeah, maybe for some special occasion, like 4 million subscribers or something like that. All right, there we go. We got us some uh, burnt rosemary simple syrup. And it's obviously very hot right now, so be very careful. Uh, and we want to let that cool completely before we make any cocktails out of it. So the next, that means the next cocktail we need to make is the other one. What was it? <laughs> um, it oh, it was uh, buttered rum. Make some buttered rum. Here we go. That's, a, that's, a, that's an old favorite of, of, of your boy Babby's. Uh, let me grab a bowl. Got to make some, got to make the buttered part. <laughs> um, let me just wipe down this countertop a little bit. It's got some booze juice on it. I feel like I should have a drink as well. Like we're doing a cocktail special and I, I don't have a drink here. So I'm just going to pour myself a little bit of bourbon. <laughs> that's good enough for me. I'll tell you what my favorite uh, go-to cocktail has been recently, and that is some of this stuff. I'm not sponsored right now. I'm just telling you a fact, which is that this is quite simply the finest seltzer known to man. Uh, it's blueberry lemonade seltzer from Polar. And this with a little bit of te uh, tequila in it and a squeeze of, of lemon juice is just like unbelievable. And, and if you use tequila, it's virtually calorie free. <laughs> it's just like the calories of the tequila, no carbs, uh, no sugar, I believe. I can't remember if there's sugar. Is there sugar in tequila? I can't remember. Um, no carbs. I know there, I mean, okay. If there's no carbs, then there has to be no sugar. This is a dirty glass. Yeah. Get a clean glass. Here. Ooh, yeah. Let me get, get my big daddy babby glass here. How about that? Bow. Okay. Let me, I'm going to have some of this Basil Hayden's probably. Let's get into this. 
once I can open it, come on. Uh, thank you, let's see, we got some more folks here giving very generous donations. 20 Canadian dollars from Shivam Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much, I love you, do. I love your show, Do What Makes You Happy. Fabulous advice, uh, do what makes you happy. Obviously that's, that's hard to do sometimes. It's just about, you know, how can you find happiness in what you do sometimes. And I'm so, so lucky I get to do what makes me happy every day. Uh, I get to, what I, what I do for a living makes me happy. So I'm extremely lucky. And it's not the case for everybody. And um, it's just, you know, there's a great book called Flow that I'm a huge fan of uh, that Sawyer and I were, were taught back in uh, high school. Flow is an amazing, amazing philosophical concept um, of uh, finding those sort of activities or just, just, just finding those, those mental um, moments when you are doing what really you were meant to do, which is just you know something where as you're doing it, the rest of the world just disappears and falls away. Uh, nothing else matters in that moment. For me, that's cooking and editing. It's like nothing else in the world exists when I'm editing or when I'm cooking. It's just that. And I'm very lucky that I get to do those for a living. Um, but uh, it's, it's just about sort of finding that, that mindset. It's, it's a more complicated concept than I can really get into right now in this live stream where I'm making cocktails. Uh, but cheers, guys. Thank you very much for, in the words of um, Nick Weed, uh, 420 uh, uh, whose who's YouTube, who's YouTube channel is, is, rest, uh, is, is long gone. Rest in peace, uh, Nickweed420. Uh, 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 Nick420CA. Cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Nick420CA, Nick, Nick, Nick that's it. Um, I would love to hear somebody in the comments remember what kind of videos he made. Yes, I'll be, I'll be watching. $10 from Boston36, spelled phonetically. You're the best, Babish. Thank you so much. Thank you for your, for your donation. Cheers to the entertainment, Mr. Ray. Thank you for giving us cause to help. Here's a few quid from Wales. Thanks to the shiny place. Appreciate it. Five pounds. Five quid. Sorry. Which I know is the same thing, but I just wanted to be culturally correct. Um, okay. So, next thing we're doing is hot buttered rum. The Martin Crane special. I'm just going to put that over there. Sorry, it's getting a little crowded over here. Let me clear my workspace a little bit. That's, in the, that's a really good thing to get in a habit of doing as a cook is keeping your workspace clear. Right now, mine's really hilariously cl cluttered. Every inch of space outside of view of this camera is just crowded with crap. Like, I got my new scale over here. I'm really excited to use this. I've been using that crappy Cuisinart scale forever now. Get that out of the way. Um, okay, here's the brown sugar that I need for, for the buttered rum. So for the buttered rum, we need a, a cup of brown sugar, if I remember correctly. Let me take a look. Yeah, a cup of brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, you could substitute with um, white sugar and add a little bit of molasses. That would work just fine, because that's essentially what brown sugar is. It's just, it's just white sugar with a bit of molasses in it. Uh, and then we need a stick of butter, which this is about a stick. I'm probably pushing it a little bit. I think I'll do a little bit less than that. This isn't exactly the healthiest drink in the world. I'm not trying to be like, that's probably a stick, actually. Now that I, if I cut it in half, if I cut it in half and put it back to back, yeah, it's a stick. Okay, we'll just we'll just put that in there. It doesn't look like it's quite softened enough yet. We'll see if I can actually get this to mix. All right. So then, to that, sorry, excuse me for just one moment. I have to run over to the spice rack again, so I gotta get some cinnamon. Da, 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 da. Oh, luckily it's right in front of me. Oh, I want some other stuff though. I want some clove. I want some ground clove. Ooh, ground ginger. Yeah, just think like, you know, think apple pie spice. Um, and you're gonna be just fine. Okay, so to this, I'm going to add, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. I dare you to try and screw this up. Like, I d you could, if you added this whole bottle of cinnamon, yeah, you're gonna screw it up. But if you just put a nice sprinkle of it like that, that's probably a roughly a tablespoon, I guarantee you it's gonna be just fine. A little bit of ground ginger, that's gonna be great, you know? Oh, oh, that's a fresh, wow. I'm, I feel bad opening this because I have like four containers of open ginger over there and I'm just taking little bits from each of them as time goes on. Um, I don't wanna leave you guys again though, so. 
never again. Um, we got some more contributions here. I just saw a $10 one disappear. Uh, sorry, but uh, thank you very much for your very gen uh, generous donations, folks. We got a little bit of ground ginger in here. I'm just going to put, hmm, that was probably a teaspoon's worth. I'm going to do less allspice. Allspice is pretty potent. I just want to do like a half a teaspoon of that and even less of cloves. Cloves are extremely potent. So I just want like a boop, just a boop. It's probably like an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves and that's going to be a plenty. Okay, so we got our butter in there. We got some brown sugar, cinnamon. Oh, of course, a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. You can't go wrong with this stuff, folks. You can't, I promise. There we go. And now I'm going to grab Tiny Whisk's Big Brother, normal sized whisk. And okay, that eh, butter's pretty firm. It's probably going to make me look pretty stupid on camera right now. Yeah, it totally is. It's okay. We can do this. Just got to mash her up. Okay, all the butter's stuck inside the whisk. Oh dear. Okay, well, see, I'm, I, I called it. I said that this is going to make me look dumb. About the only solution I know for getting butter and stuff out of a whisk is to use a butter knife like this. Just press it back out. Yeah, I should have let the butter soften up completely or I should have melted it or something. It's okay. You live and you learn. I thought I could tempt fate. There we go. Let's get it all out of there. All right, so now what I'll probably do, you know what, you know what I'll do instead of this whisk, uh, I'll use a fork. That will be a couple forks actually. That'll be way easier. Stop making me look dumb. Maybe just one fork. We'll see. I'm just going to mash this guy up. I'm feeling a lot like um, a YouTuber that uh, Sawyer and I watch a lot right now. I won't say who. Yeah, we'll see who. Um, anyway, we're mashing up this butter here. Get all this off of here. This is why we have the second fork. There we go. Just keep it clean. Okay. Who saw um, the new uh, trailer for, for the reboot of Hellboy with uh, David... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> David uh, Crap. Ah, the guy from Stranger Things who I, I have a huge man crush on. Um, David Schwimmer? No. What? No. Watch, watch Stranger Things, dog. Get on my level. I'll stop saying that. <laughs> I said it twice tonight. It's twice too many. Twice too many times. Okay, there we go. It's coming. It's coming together now. We just want this like creamy, you know, kind of mixture of butter and sugar that we can either just eat with a spoon, or we can add some uh, booze to it. A little booze cruise. David sure Harbor. Okay. David Harbor, thank you. Thank you, collective I thought of it. audience. I thought of it myself. I figured it out in my mind. Wow, nice, dude. That's awesome. I'm sorry for jumping off camera, folks. Um, I need to uh, fill up my teapot here. Got to get some boiling water going for this here buttered rum. Not boiling, but we want it nice and hot. And you could really do a lot of different things with this. You could make, like... You know, a hybrid buttered rum hot toddy. That would be cool. You know, use some chamomile tea. Um, squeeze a lemon and there would be perfectly welcome. Let's get all the sugar in there. There we go. Yeah, David Harbour is just a gorgeous guy. But the reason I asked about that trailer is, frankly, I'm not feeling it. That didn't, uh, it seems like the tone was just off. It seems like it was way too silly. And I don't know. I just, I don't know. Anyway, who's going to see, um, what's that movie coming out Christmas Day that we're going to go see? I can't remember. I always go see a movie Christmas Day if I can. Uh, I, and I, I always do this. I hope you guys, do, uh, this is a tradition I would love for everybody else to, to take part in. If you're going to go see a movie Christmas Day, just take a step back and think, like, what would it be like to have to work in a movie theater on Christmas Day? Even if you're not religious or, you know, I'm not religious, but, like, you know, even if you don't celebrate Christmas or if, you know, whatever. 
if everybody else in the world is, you know, with their families or, or just, just celebrating or relaxing in their own way, and you've got to work in a movie theater, which I've worked in a movie theater before, and that shit is rough. Um, and, you know, just what I always do is I, I go to uh, CVS and I get a three or a four pack of those iTunes or Starbucks gift cards and just uh, to each, to the ticket holder, to the ticket taker guy, to the concession person, um, just give them a little gift card and just be like, hey, Merry Christmas. And I guarantee that movie is going to be better than any movie you've ever seen. <laughs> There's something about it where it's just like, it's a nice little thing to do. And I, so the reason I do, I do it is because somebody did it for me back when I was in, in, working in a movie theater. I was working there Christmas Eve. And somebody came in and gave us all uh, lint chocolates, lint chocolate truffles, and a, a Starbucks gift card. And it was just like the nicest thing. Um, I wouldn't recommend giving food. That seems like a poor idea. Because... I don't know, it just seems like a, a scary thing to do. Um, I'm going to eat a little bit. That was a big mouthful of that. That was a lot. That was a lot. Oh, but it's really good. Mm. I mean, it's butter and sugar. You practically could eat that with a spoon. You'd get so sick, but boy, it's really good. Okay. So, here we go. Getting this. Scrape all this crap off. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hmm. And now, just because it's a little bit... Oh, crap. Dishwasher spoons, yes. Okay, let me grab a mug. Got us a mug here. I should probably stop brewing this tea. It's been brewing, like, forever. Okay, got some boiling water. Mug. And we need some dark rum. Where is my dark rum? Here we go. This is just some Bacardi dark rum. And I'm just going to fill it like, I don't know, put like a, it's probably like a quarter cup in there. You know, solid, um, how much is in a shot? Two ounces? I'm just going to do like a shot and a half-ish. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember how much, how much is in, how much is in a shot. Somebody look that up. Um, and then I just got a big old freaking dollop of this butter sugar mixture really generous dollop and I'm just gonna hit it with the with the hot water and that my friends is it like that's it hot buttered rum the most soothing healing soul quenching holiday drink least healthy richest it's uh, it's just so good just make sure that's stirred enough so that all the solids are melted I still got a little chunk, a couple of little chunks of sugar there. That that brown sugar is pretty old, so it's got some chunks in there. There we go. All right, that's it, folks. We got some hot buttered rum. Hmm. I mean, I shouldn't have had a whole spoonful of this because now that tastes like not sweet enough. But I know it is. I know objectively it is. And it's just got like this layer of butter floating on the top. It's a little emulsified. Like it's not like gross. But you can clearly see this layer of fat on top, and you just like, mm. it's so simple, it's so nice. It could totally use a nice squeeze of lemon. Like, I think that that would be really good in there. Give it a shot. I don't have a squeeze of lemon. All I have are oranges. Oh no, I do have a lemon. Hang on, I have a lemon. Let's try it. I have a lemon. Let's see what happens. And I'm gonna use this for the. Uh, the other cocktails, so I can't use a lot of it. But I'm gonna just, let's see here. Shoop. Little squeeze. Let's see what that does. Little stir. I don't know if this is traditional. I don't know if people do this. I'm just tasting it. It's just so it's so rich, and it'd be nice to have a little acid to cut through all that. Let's see. Mm, yeah, I was right. That's really good. Mm. Wow. Oh, that's really good. Okay. Oh, that's hitting me right in my soul. It's hitting me right in my heart. It's skipping my stomach altogether and it's just dripping directly into my heart. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let's see what people are up to here. I want to read some comments um, before I get back into it. 
All right, why is this, why is my comment window so small? Hang on, how do I pop out the comment window? I can't see anything. Pop out chat, here we go. Yeah, now I can see you all. What's up, folks? Ah, uh, what, uh, Yeet Boy, um, anyone know if you went to culinary school? I did not go to culinary school. Um, I am just an enthusiastic hobbyist. Hmm. Boy, I got some, I got some bags under my eyes, man. I gotta get more sleep. Let's see. Do a pizza pies. Okay. Um, what music do you like, Bavish? I like a lot of things, man. Um, recently... Sawyer got me back into Tame Impala. I hadn't listened to them in forever, and he put on a song of theirs the other day, and it really captured my imagination. Hi from Florida. Why is your forearm shaved? I just got some fresh, just got some fresh ink. For those, for anybody who's wondering, it's uh, Oliver Babish's um, "quote unquote" big hammer. I'm holding my arm in this position for the rest of the show because it apparently made me look very vascular. So I'm just gonna keep it like this, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, Oliver Babish's uh, gavel given to his father by Justice Louis Brandeis, um, who I believe was a pioneer in civil rights cases, I swear. Yeah, he was a pretty cool Supreme Court justice. I mean, he had to be if they, if they liked him on the West Wing. Don't mean yep. to get political here, but uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get these tea bags out of here because I'm worried about oversteeping. I mean, I know I've oversteeped this, but like, I want to max out that smoky flavor. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to snip these because <laughs> the odds of me untangling all those are just zilch. I'm not going to do that. Here we go. That was easier. Okay, let me toss these. Got a nice pot of Lapsang tea here. Very strong Lapsang. It's still pretty warm. Uh, I think what I'm probably going to have to do is normally you just make the punch alone and then pour it over ice, serve it in, you know, put ice in cups and ladle it over ice. But I think what I'm probably gonna have to do is add ice to the, to the punch itself and just make it very strong. Uh, it'll dilute the flavors, but it's, you know, we need, to, we need this to cool down a little bit. Um, let me put my half and half away here. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, we're doing pretty good here, man. We're already an hour deep, and, and we're, I mean, you know, we're almost finished here. We already did two of the cocktails, but mm. I'm going to have to make one of these for Brody when he gets here. Mm. Ooh, yeah, that little hit of lemon. It was really nice. It's, it really, it, 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 it really, uh, uh, j j it makes it so much more drinkable. Like, hot buttered rum is very drinkable, obviously, but it's so rich that you don't have the stamina for it always. Like it's, it's so rich that you have to like take it breather uh, every few sips. And this just makes it just so much easier to drink. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's so, so good. Okay. Hi from Belfast. Hi, Belfast. Hi, AJS Fitchak. Um, please say hi to Bob, says Little Raindrop. Hi, Bob. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What's your favorite holiday drink? I mean... I'm kind of partial to, to nog. I, I do like eggnog. Like it's this very strange, funky flavor that I really do enjoy. Um, ever had beef on weck? Hell yeah, I have. Watch brand. This is a, what is this? This is my, my, my vintage Rolex date. I believe it's circa 1989. The other one's from 1981. I have two, I have two and the, the, the other one's from uh, 1981. Um, Let's see. Hello from South Dakota. Hi, South Dakota. Hi, Val. Fight milk. I've done fight milk. Remember? Um, let's see. Thank you, Ellis Cass, for five dollars. Uh, just to remind everybody, um, all my super chat revenue is going to uh, St. Joe's Soup Kitchen here in the village. They are a great organization, and they will very much appreciate any help in uh, feeding people in need this season, this holiday season. And all seasons, but right now especially, it's nice to give people a hot meal. Uh, hi from Sweden. Hi from the Deep South. Man, everybody's here, huh? Any chance you'll try co Coquito? I don't know what that is. Is that a liquor? Or is that a food? What is that? Tame Impala is so good. They're, they're, their last album from 2017 is just so fire. Um, hello from Germany. Hello from, from Guam. I do not have a wife. Uh, 
Kois uh, I do not have a wife. I was briefly married, but I am divorced. Um, Damien Bogle just gave 50 CHF. I don't know what that is. Something francs, I guess. Thank you so much. You're a good man supporting a good cause. It's very kind. Uh, thank you for helping support that good cause in whatever currency that is. We take all currencies here uh, at, uh, at Binging with Bavish. Um, including just kind words and, and, and thoughts and also time. If you live in the New York City area, volunteer at a soup kitchen. People need to eat and anybody who can cook, if you can chop an onion, I'm not saying you need to be an amazing cook. If you can chop an onion uh, or if you can fold a napkin, then you can make a big difference in wherever you live. And I, I just said like that's only if, in your, if you're in New York City, whatever. Everybody uh, that can, if you have the time, if you have the ability, please uh, try putting some time in in a soup kitchen this holiday season or any time of year because people are hungry and uh, it's a really great way to help out. Um, let's see. Have I heard the new Wolfbeck album? Yes, I have. I'm not as crazy about it as uh, I was um, Thrill of the Arts and um, uh, uh, The Beautiful Game. Um, but uh, what was it called? Hill Climber? It was good. What is that currency? 40,000 in COP. I don't know what that is, but thank you so much. Will you make more collabs with How to Drink? Oh, anyways, love your vids. Keep up everything you make. Happy holidays and lo lots of love from Colombia. So that must be uh, the Colombian currency. I don't, I'm not sure what their currency is, but thank you so much, Sergio R Rodriguez. Um, that was very, very kind. Uh, 94 Egg E just gave 100 SEK. Um, I, th I think that was a Swiss currency. I can't remember. But thank you so much uh, for, for your contribution. Everything today is going to St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen in the East Village. Uh, they do some great stuff. Um, Colombian peso. Thank you. Um, let's see. So people are saying it's $12. Yeah. Okay. It's, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a donation to a very worthy cause. So thank you for literally any amount anyone can give thank you so much um linda just gave five dollars five us dollars uh but seriously all acts of kindness are beautiful thank you babish for this one thank you for this one you're the one who just did something very nice thank you um <coughs> let's see Psst, you ever had limoncello yes i have had limoncello it's very good and it's so super, super easy to make and it's a perfect like easy to make gift for when you're you know in college and you can't afford you're of drinking age and you can't afford to buy everybody presents it's like a cheap and easy way to make a nice gift for your friends and your family i did it once and they all loved it um let's see good luck in your exam that must be for somebody else whoever's having have it has an exam coming up i know a lot of people do um uh good luck to all of you studying um let's see hi from italy hi swiss franc i was close no that was another whatever um okay Back to drink making. Let's put our punch together. That's what we're gonna do. Let me grab my, my punch bowl. Oh geez, it's up on the top shelf. Here we go. I'm not as tall as I'd like to be. I'm not short, but I could definitely use a few extra inches. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got, let me wipe this out, a little dusty. This is really my trifle. I'm sure you guys noticed that this is my my trifle dish uh, from the uh, Rachel's uh, Authentic English Trifle episode of Binging. But it also makes a perfectly fine punch bowl in a pinch. Punch bowl, punch in a pinch. It makes a perfectly fine punch bowl in a pinch. There we go. Nice little wipe down, looking good. Okay, uh, so first thing we need to do is fill it up with fruit. Let these things cool off as long as we possibly can because they're still hot. So I got some oranges here, just some plain old oranges. Now I know that there was a step where I made something that I cannot remember how to pronounce. It was a, um, it was a, uh, a fruit oil simple syrup where you'd basically peel a bunch of lemons and oranges and you'd, um, you'd, you'd mix them with sugar, muddle them with sugar and let them sit for 24 hours. And that uh, brings out uh, you know, all, these, all these fruit oils. So, Again, no citrus, uh, no, not citrus, um, no acid in that. It's just the, the, the fruit flavor um, being extracted. And uh, I didn't have time to do that. So 
what we're going to do is just, I'm going to squeeze a bunch of lemon juice in there. I'm just going to, I think with these lemons, instead of slicing them up and putting them in there, I think I'm just going to squeeze lemon juice in there. No, it's going to add a whole, a whole bunch of acid. What am I saying? I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze a couple of these oranges in there. I have lots of oranges, so that's fine. Let me lose all these labels here. Let's, let's all try to lose labels. Okay, guys, it's 20, it's, it's almost 2019. Let's get rid of labels. Okay. No more labels. We got these or nice organic fruits. Lots of tags on them, just the way God intended. What are you guys up to here? Uh, we got, so oh, we got some more donations here before it goes away. 125 PHP, I'm guessing that's Philippines. Hey, Babish, just started watching recently. Really enjoy it. Love to donate for a good cause. Thank you, Kyle, Kyle Farrell. $5, five Canadian dollars from Corrupt2939. Uh, this is from Windsor, Ontario, and for festive vodka ginger, replace the ginger ale with cranberry ginger ale, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays. That sounds good. Cranberry ginger ale vodka? Sounds good. Best greetings from Sw uh, Sweden. Always wondered, what is your favorite drink? Um, hmm. I mean, you know, I keep saying old-fashioned. That's my favorite go-to. I've certainly had better drinks than an old-fashioned. Uh, if I had to choose a favorite go-to, um, probably my other favorite drink. I love penicillins and I love Moscow mules. They're not very in season right now, but uh, they're very, very nice. So always on the lookout. These are some caracara oranges. So they've got this nice red flesh. You can get blood oranges or caracara or just regular oranges. I'm not gonna tell you how to, how to live your life. I wish I had a sharper knife right now. This knife desperately needs a sharpening. So it's giving me a little bit of grief. That's okay. This is mostly for decoration, but like, it's also you're also gonna ladle it into people's glasses if you're having you know if you're having a party, or people are gonna ladle it into their own glasses, and um, then you get that nice little little bit of fruit flavor. And you, if you want to eat it, you can. You can just rip it out. Whenever I have um, what's it called? Um, whenever I have sangria, I always end up eating the fruit, so I don't think of it as wasted at all. Um, this has the, the thickest rind I've ever seen on an orange. Look at that. Why? Look at that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you ever seen anything like that? Okay. It's okay. It's just for decor and flavor. Um, and it's just me and Sawyer and Evan drinking all this tonight. And we have to drink all of it, okay? Otherwise, we're being wasteful. And I won't have that. In my house, so we have to drink all of it. Let's get these caracara oranges in there. Then these, I think, are just traditional oranges. Yeah. So I'll slice these guys up. Um, I kind of want to eat one of these. I love a good fresh orange. You know what? Next uh, month is, or is it January or February? That is um, uh, what's called Honey Bell Orange. Uh, season and for those of you who don't know if you're a Seinfeld fan they kind of did a little tribute to to this they they had Kramer be obsessed with these fictional peaches called Mackinac peaches and it's just these you know peaches that are incredibly flavorful and juicy and um, the real iteration of that is Honey Bell oranges that these Florida oranges That's a good orange, I can't complain. Um, there are these Florida oranges that are incredibly juicy and incredibly flavorful. When you eat it, it's like you're drinking an orange. It's unreal. Um, and just so everybody knows, it makes a great gift uh, to order some, you know, obviously they're not coming out for another two months. They're only ripe for a month a year. and. They are expensive. They're like 60 bucks for a, a, you know, a bushel of them. But it's a nice gift if you, for somebody who you don't know what to get them. For the man who has everything. Um, some nice uh, honey bell oranges are a pretty good way to go. This is filling up really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and stop putting oranges in there. And I'm going to do a little bit of lemon here. Where's that lemon? I, here. There's the lemon I hacked open. Let's get a couple lemon slices in there. I'm less thrilled about these because they got seeds in them. And these oranges are gracefully seedless. What's cool is the fact that I'm not using all these is that I get to 
eat the rest. <laughs> but I love oranges, so. Okay. If you can't tell by my, all, all my orange rantings right now, I freaking love oranges. Okay. One more Cara Cara. That's all I want. Christmas. One more. Just for a little bit of color. Let's start slicing this normally. I don't know why I'm doing those shallow, stupid little slices. Okay. Mmm. Oh, they're a little tart. It's almost like I know it's not a hybrid of an orange and a grapefruit, because that's not something that you can do. But it's almost like that. It's got the the tartness and a little bit of bitterness like a grapefruit, but it's got the flavor of an orange. It's lovely. Okay. All right. That's too much fruit. It's okay. And these are nice and cold, so hopefully that's going to chill everything down here. This is still really hot. Um, all right, what else is going in here? Oh, man, we got... Uh, we still got more, more donations here. We got... Uh, don't have much, but glad to help those in need, says Dr. Bangs. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate, especially if you, if you don't have much to, to, to give, that's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, Piggy11801, speaking of Moscow mules, what is your favorite alternative version of a mule? Um, probably Kentucky mule. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a bourbon freak, so yeah, Kentucky mule. Oregon Cheryl gave $5 and said, would love to see you make Coquito, Port Puerto Rican eggnog with coconut milk and rum. My kids and I love your show. Cheers from Oregon. That sounds delicious. I'm definitely going to look into that. And thank you very much for your donation. Celine S., thank you for an awesome channel and Spotify playlist that got me through this week. Seriously, what is your favorite episode of Frasier? Happy holidays. Well, I can tell you exactly what my favorite episode of Frasier is. Oh, God, I thought I was going to have the season and episode number off the top of my head. Um, this is the signal for Sawyer to look it up quietly right now. Uh, whatever. It's, it's in season um, eight, I think, or nine. Eight or nine. It's called Taking Liberties. Um, and it stars, uh, it, it guest stars the great Victor Garber, who you might know from, like, everything, because he's in so much stuff. I think he was in Downton Abbey. He, um, was he? He was, he was in Sicario. He was, he, he's in so much stuff. Uh, season and he plays 8, episode 5. Season 8, episode 5, Taking Liberties. Uh, it's, it's when Frasier gets a butler, played by Victor Garber. And uh, it has some of the best Frasier-Niles interplays of all time. And it is a constant reminder how amazing it would have been if Victor Garber had become a new minor character on the show. So it, it's a little upsetting to watch, but so, so is the great... The great media of our time. Um, anyway, just thought I'd come down here and tell you that. Okay. So, so thank you, Celine, for sending me on that diatribe. Uh, Jortendo, $20. Thank you so much. I'm going to be making duck au orange for the first time ever on Christmas. Wish me luck. Good luck, Jortendo. That is, you know, that's no, that's no mean feat. That's, uh, that's, that's not easy, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're going to crush it. I'm sure uh, your friends and family are going to love it. Tob Y., uh, gave uh, 549. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. I, I also see this old one that I missed here. Joyce Bringleson. Joyce Bringleson. Um, let's see. Sorry. I'm just putting it over here. Joyce Bringleson uh, gave $50 earlier. Thank you so much. Your commentary is just as candidly funny live, Ray. Gen glad a genuine dude like yourself is getting so much attention. Thanks for supporting a good cause. That's very kind. Thank you for a very generous donation. And I um, uh, really appreciate it. And thank you for the kind words. Uh, Bartek Krasina. Bartek Krasina gave 25 PLMs uh, and said, hi. Hi. Thank you for your donation. Uh, it is going to a good cause. Thank you. Okay. Back to work, folks. I'm just killing time right now because this is all still hot and I'm not entirely sure what to do about it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I guess in the meantime, we can just sort of have a drink and hang out a little bit. Yeah, I've um, collected a couple questions if you want to roll through that. Hang on, we just got one question coming in from a super chatter. Miranda Liesk uh, gave five Canadian dollars. What's the best meal to make, to make for a one-girl Christmas dinner? Um, when I spent Thanksgiving alone a few years ago, I wasn't able to afford to go home, and I, my roommates all went out of town, so I was just alone on Thanksgiving. I just, uh, I butterflied a turkey breast and did a roulade with the turkey breast, kind of like what I did for the, the Who 
um, the uh, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas um, Roast Beast, but with a single turkey breast, and you, you cut it open the same way that we opened up the pork loin, um, uh, cut it open like a book, st spread your stuffing on there, roll it up, cover it in its own skin, and roast it. And it makes a great little Thanksgiving or any kind of holiday meal, Christmas meal, uh, for one or two. It's a, it's a really nice way to go. Um, I'm sorry if you're alone during the holidays. Uh, I know, I mean, I'm not sorry if that's what you want to do. Like, I know it's nice to be alone. I like being alone. Mm. But um, if, if, uh, if you're alone and, you, and you'd rather be with family, I'm sorry to hear that. And um, I'm glad that you're here hanging out with, with other people. I, uh, oh, sorry, we got a... Um, uh, uh, we got a hundred dollar donation from Sean Byram. Byram, who's your favorite character from the gay and wondrous life of Caleb Gallo? Introduced you to it a year or two ago, I think you did. I'm not entirely sure who you are, but thank you for introducing me to it. Um, my favorite character, there's only one right answer to this, and that is Freckle, uh, is the best character on the gay and wondrous life of Caleb, Caleb Gallo. Anyway, thank you so much. For an incredibly generous donation. It's going to a good cause. Thank you so much, and thank you for introducing me to the gay and wondrous life of Gabe, Gabe Gallo. Sawyer, what was the question? Sorry. Um, first of all, I just wanted to note that somebody was playing our favorite game of all time, Max Payne 3, and uh, they noted that the uh, guy at the end, when he shaves his head, looks kind of like you, so that's cool. It's also the nicest thing that anybody's ever said to me, so thank you. Yeah, because that guy's cool. That's right. That is a compliment. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. That Max um, Payne fellow? Yeah. Uh, sticking with gaming, somebody asked you to do the lobster bisque from Red Dead Redemption. Have we the just the not gotten there yet? Bisque? Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. We're, we're yeah. going slow, okay? We're going slow. We, we're busy. <laughs> we don't we, we want to be master hunters. and we, Yeah, we're busy with our jobs. Um... Okay, we got a request for a Buck Strickland's Hot Toddies, which reminded me of uh, Buck offering those hot toddies to, uh, to you know, Bobby. You want a hot toddy? Hot toddy to calm your nerves? You want a hot toddy? <laughs> Two hot toddies! <laughs> That's good. Um, all right, so those aren't necessarily questions, but that was what was on my mind. Uh, as for questions... We got a request for you to do food from American Psycho. We've been over this, but what do they got? Like, you know, fancy rich it, man's foods? Yeah, the, the stuff from Dorcia, which is the, the restaurant that he's going, dying to go to. It's like sea urchin pasta. I mean, it's fancier than that. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty good. Um, no, it's like these impossibly fancy dishes. I'm, I've always been curious about it, but it does sound extremely challenging, um, but it's definitely on my mind. All right, great. Um... Here we got one from Caffeinated Addiction. Um, they wanted to know what your last meal would be, but interestingly, their last meal would be coconut tapioca with spicy pineapple, which does sound delicious, but it sounds too sounds quick. Nice. It's, a, it's a snack. You know, you got to have that's something that takes a, a while. Yeah, that's, that, that's what you that, get at the that, end, that, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to fill up. I'm trying to get it all if it's my last meal. I'm trying to get um, it all. I'm trying to get it all. I, I just, I, I, that's, what I, that's what I like the most. And I just want to know what that tastes like. Um, uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> just rattling off inside jokes. Um, uh, 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 my last meal, I'm guessing, it's the meal that's most consistently made me roll my eyes back in my head out of pleasure. Uh, you know, just like, oh, like, oh my God. Um, and that is um, uh, Buff Bourguignon. Uh, like, particularly, I think probably the, if maybe not the best one I've ever had, but one of the best and one of the richest and most over the top and like, just the, 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 the most exaggerated version of the dish I've ever had is from, crap, what's it called? Hang on, hang on. I'm going to look it up. Sorry. Um, uh, French restaurant in Yountville. Uh, Bistro Jean T. That's it. Bistro Jean T. Um, it's, you know, Yontville is filled with like French Laundry and Bouchon Bistro and all these amazing restaurants. And the, there are still some great restaurants there that aren't constantly packed. So you can get a, res, a reservation at Bistro Jean T like anytime you want. 
and they have amazing food there. They had the best, easily the best coco van I've ever had. Um, but one of the best, one of the most unique um, buff bourguignons I've ever had. It's like pure short rib. It's just these big hunks of perfectly marbled short rib. Uh, and the sauce is so rich and so decadent. Uh, there's a picture of it on my Instagram. If you go to like, I think it was probably July of this past year, you'll see uh, you, you'll see a, a buff bourguignon with these long chives shaved on top of it, and uh, and it's just the most over the top buff bourguignon. I think I would that that would be my last meal. Sorry, what's the next question? I went too far. No, that was great. Um, I want to go there. Um, the last question I saved for last because it's the longest conversation from Stump Jumper. Is Dogtown the best garbage plate? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and embarrass myself pretty good right now. I don't think I've ever no, been to that's Dogtown. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, you know where it is, though. Yeah, yeah. It's the one on Monroe Ave? Yeah, I think, wait. O Monroe over by Ave. Elab? Oh, okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just say Elab. <laughs> yeah. The, the Elab dog, uh, hots place. I've never been that there. That one's good. It's good, but it's not my favorite. My favorite's hometown, baby. P hots, brother. P hots all the way. Any of the hots ones like H hots, P hots, it's all the same company. Um, but, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big Nick Tahoe's guy. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, sorry if that makes me a, uh, a snob. But um, so I'm just throwing a, just just FYI, just give you an idea of what I'm doing right now. I figured these are pretty strong. Like this is really strong tea, so it's not going to hurt if I dilute it a little bit just to cool it down. So I'm just throwing a couple, a couple ice chunks in there. It doesn't matter if it's. I don't care if it's not cold. I just don't want it to be hot, and this is like hot. So I'm just gonna give that a little stir. It's not hot. It's just like it's still very warm. It's perfectly good simple syrup though. Let me. I was about to lick that knife, and that was that would just be a mistake. Um, let me grab a spoon here. Oh, let me grab one of my little tasting spoons. My my ex uh, my ex wife gave me these tasting spoons. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's, it's messed up to say, but it's true. Um, here we go. <laughs> anyway, um, mm. oh wow, wow, okay. That's awesome. It's, it's fully tastes like burnt, burnt rosemary. It's so good. Wow. And it's totally like cooled off. That, that cooled it right off. It's not even warm anymore. I think this is fine too. All right, so I think we're ready to assemble. Um, I have way too many orange slices in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few out, honestly. <laughs> like it's way too much. I'm just gonna take out some of the normal orange slices, keep all the cara cara in there. I'm gonna eat these. Because I don't know if you heard me before, but I freaking love oranges. <laughs> Good for you. I'm gonna eat one right now. Mm. Wow. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> Wash all the orange flesh off my my fingers. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Now, I have too much of each here. <laughs> this is too much tea. This is too much simple syrup. As I learned when I shot that episode, I added way too much simple syrup, and it was way too sweet. Mm. So, as a result, I will be doing this by pretty much the, 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 the method by which you should make any given cocktail, which is by taste. Wait, this has a pull tab on it. Come on. Uh, so I'm just going to be adding gin, I'm going to be adding lapsang, and I'm going to be adding simple syrup until it reaches the correct mixture of the three. Um, and we're just gonna we're just gonna say a little prayer. I'm gonna start with the gin because I have an I have a feeling of how strong I want it to be. So I'm just gonna add probably about maybe half the bottle, a little bit more. It's which is you know this is a 750 milliliter bottle, so that's what that's um, uh, roughly just shy of two cups, I believe. I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm positive I'm wrong. So please don't do the math and prove me wrong. I know I'm wrong. Um, and then I'm going to add maybe half of this tea. Oh, why do they make these impossible pour? It always spills. That just drives me wild. Um, and now I'm going to add maybe about half of this, la of this uh, simple syrup. 
just to start. And uh, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Lap Sang Jin Triple Sec. I almost forgot about the Triple Sec. There we go. This is going to bring some more orange flavor to it. This is another thing that I do to deviate from um, the Serious Safe Eats uh, recipe. About a half cup of Triple Sec. Triple Sec is usually a pretty low grade alcohol. You know, this, this, this guy costs like seven bucks, I think. So it's not like the highest quality alcohol in the world. It's just to bring some flavor, bring some more orange flavor to, to, the, to the party. Um, now I'm gonna grab my little ladle. My littlest ladle. That's, that, that's Tiny Whisk's uh, cousin, is the littlest ladle. And I have way too many citrus slices in here. <laughs> um, it's okay, it's okay. I think I probably need more tea. Just eyeballing. There we go. And this should result in a nice, smoky, uh, herby punch. So let me grab a spoon, give it a little tasty taste. Words my buddy Brad, Brad Leone. I hope uh, we can have him on one of the live streams soon. I feel like he'd have fun here. I wonder, if, I wonder if he's ever done a live stream with his outfit. Mm. Ooh. Woo. Could use a little bit more sweetness, actually. Oh, there he is. Jake, can you get that? Well, the doorbell just you rang. Want, you want me to check it? I mean... Could be the, could be the thief again. Uh, all right. Leave it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he texts you him. and says... Uh, okay. Yeah. It's not right, we're not going to let the thief in. It's just the thief. Somebody has been legitimately stealing packages and just ripping my packages open and not taking anything when it's like, you know, my new kitchen scale and my new, my new uh, rolling pin. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just rip it open and just like, oh, this isn't worth stealing. So what I'm doing right now, in case you're wondering, is I'm rolling the orange. I'm, here, I'm, I should probably be showing this instead of doing it in the only place where there's counter space. Here we go. Orange down. Flatter your palm, press it hard. This is gonna make it easier to juice. And I'm gonna grab a little strainer because I don't feel like using my hand to catch all the seeds because then I have to wash my hand and I don't feel like doing that. Okay, that must be him. All right. Here, I'll... Hello. Hi, delivery. All right, I'll let him in, but I'm not calling, I'm not calling him up. I don't trust. <laughs> Wait, what could yeah, possibly that, be coming that didn't right sound, now? That didn't sound like the thief, but that wasn't... It wasn't the thief. Brody. Well, I, I would hope that Brody wouldn't say high delivery. That would just be deceitful. All right, so what this really does need is some acid. It's very, very smoky and um, rich. And, uh, whoa, the freight elevator just went nuts. All right, so... It's, it's very smoky, it's very, very rich, and, need, and needs some acid. So I'm gonna squeeze this, if not if every other bit of lemon juice that I have in there. And hopefully that will uh, solve the problem. Give that a little stir. Okay, my punch is nearly done. That looks cool with the, with the high shutter speed. <laughs> no blur, you know? Looks like an action movie, like Spielberg in the early 2000s. Okay, let's give that a shot. Mm, okay, that's pretty much there. Yeah, that's exactly where I want it. That li I, I know it's just the juice of one lemon, but that was enough to make it just come to life a little bit. So now the procedure is to be a hipster and serve it in a mason jar. And I'm gonna fill that guy with ice. Nice chunky rock ice like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and ladle some in. I guarantee I'm gonna spill it everywhere. Here we go. Whoop. Yep, I did. It's okay. This is, you know, an office cocktail party. Nobody's trying to trying to keep their decorum. Okay. I should what I should have done is cut these uh, orange slices into um, into halves because then we're running into this issue where it's not fitting in the, there we go. 
a little bit more. Whoop. There we go. And there we have a nice, let me get one more slice of uh, citrus in there just so it looks nice. There we go. Got ourselves a nice smoky lapsang punch with citrus and gin and a smoked uh, 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 or a burnt rosemary simple syrup. And it is really, mm. yeah, especially once you get it nice and chilled like that, that's really something special. That's something that's going to get you nice and messed up at the company Christmas party and make you make some decisions you're going to regret because it doesn't even, it tastes like juice. It tastes like fruit juice, like, or smoky fruit juice. <laughs> no, it doesn't taste like fruit juice. What I mean is it doesn't taste like it has alcohol in it. And it's, it's, it, it, I'm sure it's pretty strong. There's a half a bottle of gin in there, but, um, it's, it's just like pleasant to drink. It's not summery despite all the citrus all the smoke from the lapsang and from the um, smoked uh, uh, simple syrup make it very wintry. This is perfect for the season. It f even though this is iced down, it feels warming. It feels comforting. It's very of the season. Mm. Ah, so that's our three cocktails. And with that, I'm just going to answer a few more questions and then we're, we're going to call it a night. It's going to be a quick stream. This is the last one in 20, 2018, folks. And, you know, we got... I have two more episodes to shoot before I can go home because uh, I want to have... Um, I want to have those, those... I want to have two ready, one for Christmas Day and one for New Year's Day because those both happen to be Tuesdays. So, let's see. What are folks saying here? We've got... Da, 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 Odin... 10 euros. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Years ago when I saw one of your earlier episodes, I checked your uploads and was delighted to see an Evil Dead clip. Love that it's still there. Yeah, there's a couple little videos that I didn't have the heart to take down. There's the me testing the um, Miracle Blade. There's the mashup of the 300 trailer with uh, Evil Dead. And then there's um, the, the trailer for Waterproof, which is a documentary that Sawyer and Rashid and I worked on when... Um, when uh, we were freshmen in college, we went to New Orleans, and here I'm gonna get down and talk to you guys face to face. Get this. Up. Oh no, I guess this is nice to have in frame, isn't it? We'll just have it off to the side here. It's part of the party. So yeah, I'm all about symmetry. I want to keep things centered. That's dead center right there. Okay. All right, let's get down down here. All right, so yeah, uh, if you go look at my oldest YouTube videos, there are a couple remnants from my film school days and from days immediately after college. And um, hmm. yeah, I didn't have the heart to take them down. It hurts my YouTube standing somehow to have really old videos because then it shows this inconsistency in upload where you know one video came out five years ago and the next one came out uh, three years ago. And it's like, oh, this guy's bad at uploading. but. I don't have the art to take those down. Um, wow, there's a lot of what looks like Greek being spoken right now. Um, let's see. We got... Uh, what was the question? Oh, it was about Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah. And then there was this trend back in um, when 300 came out was to take the trailer, which was immediately recognizable at the time. You could be like, oh, it's 300 trailer because everybody had seen it and mash it up with any other movie. And for me, it was 300 uh, uh, meets uh, Army of Darkness. Um, bald, yes, I am bald. I'm proud, too. That's the other part. Oops, I just fell in my sink. Um, this copy of my last Super Chat. I'm sorry, I missed it. Jacqueline Luzadi. Uh, this copy of my last Super Chat. Have you ever made halazel, basically a fish stew overloaded with paprika? It's a Hungarian Christmas staple. I can't say that I have. Um, it sounds... Similar to Paprikash, maybe? I don't know. Um, but I'm curious about it now, so I'll check that out. I love anything with spatzel, if it has spatzel. Oh, my hand is just... <laughs> I was just dipping it in the cocktail. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let Daddy clean up a little bit. Okay. Wipe all this junk up. Put my arms down like a civilized human. Okay. There we go. That's better. There we go. Okay. So uh, just one more time, make one more push. Anybody who is willing to give a super chat right now, all of my cut 
100% of my Super Chat revenue is going to St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen here in the East Village in New York City. Great organization, doing great things. They're making soup for people who need it. Um, and uh, I'd love anybody right now who can give a Super Chat. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I put my money where my mouth is earlier, and I did my own. You can see it in the beginning. And I appreciate so much all the incredible generosity that's been that's been uh, uh, displayed here tonight. So many people have given so much. Thank you, Spooty. We got one right now. Two dollars. Thank you. When uh, BWB branded oven gloves and aprons as soon as possible. We did a little test run with BWB aprons and went really well. So we're definitely going to have those out there. I promise. Um, let's see. Do sushi says one man wolf pack one day. Um, so. Uh, what, what, what the hell was I talking about? I lost it. Anyway, any, any, uh, any questions I missed before, Jake? Nothing I see. Well, we got a four ninety nine super chat from hat Matt 1170. Uh, thank you for all your content. Thank you for giving. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We got Mike. I can't pronounce that two euros and I can't read what he said, but thank you. Douglas Prodor uh, gave $5 and said, any, got any plans for the New Year, Babby? I love all of your collabs with Brad. I love them too. And uh, I don't have any New Year's plans yet. I have been invited to a couple parties, but I don't know if I'm just going to keep it low and quiet and, or if I'm going to go out and, and do something, but we'll see. Uh, Skullman Gaming gave two ninety nine. dollars says, shut up and take my money. I will. Thank you. St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen will take your money. Um, J. Ls gave five dollars and said, "Already said this, but if it's for charity, I'm willing to do it again." Your videos have really motivated me to get back into cooking, so thanks. I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you both for sharing that and for a very kind donation to a very good cause. Thank you, J. L. Uh, Rachel Nelson, thank you for reigniting my passion for cooking. This is the nicest thing that I could possibly hear in the world. I love that any of you have found any um inspiration to cook from watching these videos i really appreciate hearing that and i'm very very grateful that you'd share it with me um mvmv128 gave 20 dollars and said you're a champ babish happy holidays thank you you're a champ thank you for giving i really appreciate it uh sounds like you saw something jake you just said ooh. yeah i, I saw freddy 735 saying merry christmas from the land of the 315 wayne county baby wayne county um, let's see, ten, we, ten euros. Our school from, played their school in sports. Uh, occasionally. Uh, uh, Odin gave 10 euros and said, uh, Imgur, I make a silicon hand-stitched Necronomicon. Only made seven so far and retired the mold. Uh, would make the last one send to you if you wanted. Yeah, shoot me an email at bingingwithbabish at gmail.com. We'll check it out. Thanks, man. Thank you for your, do your donation. Rachel Nelson gave $5. Thank you. For, oh, you already, I'm sorry. I already said hi, but thank you again. Um, Freddie 735 said, Merry Christmas from the land of the 315. That, okay, that's what you were talking about. Merry Christmas to Wayne County. Uh, Rod Shop Dodge Colts 777. Andrew, love your channel. Can you say, hey, Aaron, hope you like the sous vide cooker. Hey, Aaron, I hope you like the sous vide cooker. It's from me. Not your friend. It's from me. I bought it, and it's from me. No, I'm kidding. Your friend is very kind to give you a sous vide cooker, and I do hope you enjoy it. Aaron, a spelled A-A-R-O-N, friend of Rod Shop Dodge Colt, who just gave $7.77. Merry Christmas. Um, Chad Cruz gave $10. Thank you so much for your very kind donation. Appreciate it. Uh, Alan Burquist gave $5. Love your work. Happy holidays and new year. Thank you. Happy holidays and new year to you too. And thank you for your donation. Daniel Hill gave five Canadian dollars, which are just as good as American dollars. Do more vids from Crunchyroll. Uh, totally will. Absolutely will. They've been a very awesome sponsor to have and they've been great to work with. So I'm totally going to be doing more anime stuff in the future. Uh, Christy Hastings gave $10 and said, thank you for putting this together. Love you watching your show. Happy holidays. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, Let's see. Mr. Wolftastic said, you seem like a dick. And he's been kind of, uh, he's been kind of, and he said, people are really giving this asshole money for reading. Well, they're giving me money to give to a soup kitchen uh, in New York City. So please, anybody who's, who's giving money, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Mr. Wolftastic, I hope you have a better day tomorrow because it sounds like you're not having a good one today. Um, 
Aaron Kaiser just gave $10. Thank you so much for a very generous donation to a very good cause. Appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys uh, give these cocktails a try it yourselves too. Cause this is, this, I've made this, I've made this for the company office party before. And we all had a real, we had a, had a real good time. Um, so uh, I hope you go try it yourselves. I think you'll enjoy yourselves. Hmm. Let's see. We got $2 from Miguel Sanchez. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You said you were awesome, and it's a very kind donation to a very good cause. Amy Ponce. I need, like, knee pads or something. Ow. Okay, Amy Ponce gave 125 PHP. I can't remember what that was. Um, I think that was Filipino, maybe. Um, ha Happy Holidays, Babish. Been a Patreon since April and looking forward to more of your content. Thank you so much for a, what I assume is a, uh, for, thank you very much for your donation and thank you for being a patron. I really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the show and thank you for supporting St. Saint Joseph's Soup Kitchen. Um, let's see, Oscar Mendez just gave $10. Thank you so much, it's very, very kind. Nick Allen just gave $5. Your videos really motivated me to learn to cook better and I've discovered a love for it and for fond. That's all I needed to hear. That's, that's all I need to hear, is that I, I, I helped you learn about Fond. Brings a tear to my eye. Um, uh, Daniel Hill just gave five Canadian dollars and said, oof, the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollars are just fine, man. We take all different kinds of dollars around here. It's all going to a good cause. Five dollars from Richard Shosky. Uh, what's the best thing you made for an episode that would impress a crowd of friends? Uh, for an episode, impress a crowd of friends. Um, actually, you know what? Probably the um, whole pork loin. From basics, uh, it, uh, me and my camera crew ate that, and despite like we shoot ten episodes of basics in a row over five days, it's a marathon of work and of eating, and despite that, we ate almost damn near the whole thing because it's so good. I, I wish I could take credit for it. It's not my recipe. It's from America's Test Kitchen, but it's so brilliantly flavored and juicy and tender. It's unbelievable. Um, so. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, have some Queen's Sterling. Oh my goodness. Um, so, so sorry, uh, <laughs> Richard Shosky, to answer your question, check out the whole pork loin from Binging with, uh, from, from Basics with Babish and do the one where it was, um, stuffed with, with a prosciutto, uh, lemon zest garlic mixture. It's unbelievable. Uh, David Taylor, five pounds, have some Queen's Sterling, do more British stuff, happily. Just for you, man. I will. Thank you so much. Uh, Alexander Torres, $5. I tried making the Bobkas from Seinfeld video today. It's been a disaster. Oh, well, better luck tomorrow, I hope. You may look, you look, make it look so easy, my man. First off, I'm sorry to hear that. And second off, don't worry. For every success I have in the kitchen, there's 10 disasters behind it. So just try again tomorrow. You got this. I believe in you. Um, let's see... Bethany Knapper gave five pounds and said, Merry Christmas, falling back in love with cooking because of this channel. Thanks for all your content. That's really lovely to hear. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for the donation and thank you for sharing that. That's music to my ears. I'm very happy that you're, cook that you're, you're, you're in love with cooking again. Um, Nick Price gave $10. Awesome thing you're doing tonight for the soup kitchen. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and keep on babbing. Thank you so much, Nick. That's very generous of you and... Uh, you and everybody else who has given tonight is making a big difference over at St. Jo St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Chase Fiore says, gave $5 and said, cheers, everyone deserves a hot meal. They absolutely do. And you're, I think five bucks you've paid for, I, like I've seen their operation over there. And for five bucks, you've paid for three or four people's hot meals. So thank you so much for paying for a few people's hot meals on a, a, a time of year when they need it the most. Maddie, it's 2 a.m., gave $25 and said, thanks for supporting a good, good cause. Any chance you watch June's Kitchen? Of course I watch June's Kitchen. I love June. I just had a Google chat with him uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I plan on going to Tokyo next year to try and do something with him, get on his channel, learn how to make some sushi with his cats. Um, thank you very much for your donations. Very, very kind. Aaron Kaiser is back, $5. Thanks for expanding my culinary imagination and love your show, brother. Love from South Florida, thank you so much, Aaron. It's very, very kind. Uh, and um, thank you for helping make a difference this uh, holiday season. Really appreciate it. I'll be 
tomorrow or the next day, whenever I find out what whatever the sum total is, I'll tweet out like how much we were able to donate to St. Joseph's and and uh, uh, so keep an eye out for that. You know, just to make sure that I'm being specific, I'll do it not tomorrow. So tomorrow's Friday, so I'll do Saturday. Saturday I will tweet out. Keep an eye on my Twitter, binging W Badish, binging Will Badish, uh, on on Twitter. Um, to see how much we raised tonight uh, for St. Joseph's Soup Kitchen. $20 from Frank and Chucky. Uh, $20, you should make salmon coule blanc, coule blanc from uh, Food Wars. It would make a great cross section. I'm gonna look into that. I haven't heard of that one yet. 50, whatever that is, from Hakan Z. What is your favorite food from a t- show slash movie you have made? Love from, I assume you meant Iceland, it just says Island. Or maybe it was just an island. Maybe you're just from an island. That's that's cool. Um, but thank you so much for your for your contribution. Appreciate it. Uh, what is your favorite food from a show slash movie you've made? Um, gotta be. Let me think on that. Let me get back to you. Sorry. Wow, we have a hundred dollars. Wait, another hundred dollars from Sean Byram, dude. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much. That is incredibly generous. Two hundred dollar donations from Sean Byram, you guys. That's really, really kind. You're paying to feed a lot of mouths. Like seriously, that's gonna feed a lot of people. Uh, and and every contribution we get is absolutely incredible. And I thank you all. And uh, Sean, that's incredibly generous. Just gonna close out the night with another one of these. Thanks for doing this. Worked a West Coast soup kitchen for several years, so this is close to my heart. That's lovely to hear, man. It's kind enough that you worked in a soup kitchen for that long. Uh, but to to donate like this is unbelievable. Really appreciate it. Happy holidays. Thank you for joining, and um, and thank you for being uh, extremely generous and helping a lot of people this holiday season. That's very very kind. Uh, five pounds from the shiny place. Uh, I, I'm not sure what that first part is. To to you and all that let let you die. To you and all that received this Christmas babish, babish. I'm not sure what that means, but I assume it's like a season's greetings kind of thing. Um, Thanks, and to you as well. Um, we got five Canadian dollars from Arbitrary Alex. Thank you for your content. When is the Chef John collab? Please make it happen. Uh, as soon as possible. Like, that guy doesn't want to... He, he only shows his hands on camera, so it's a little tricky to get him on in, a, in, a, in another show format, but I'd love to have him on the show. I get so much information from him. He's a great learning resource. I'm sure all of you already watch Chef John, but if you don't, go check it out. Search for Food Wishes or Chef John on YouTube and check out his stuff. It's amazing. Um, five dollars from Net Hands. Thank you so much, and five dollars from Kelly Roth. Um, thank you guys so much. Like, really, really amazing stuff. Um, uh, thank you for giving to this cause. And I'm, I, I, it looks like people realize that the show's over, so we got we got people dropping like flies. But I do appreciate it. Um, oh my God! What? Maddie K. Just gave another hundred dollars. Maddie K USA just gave $100. Thank you so much. Uh, just one more for a good cause. Love you, Babish. That is so, so kind. Thank you. Um, I cannot believe the outpouring of generosity that we're seeing tonight. Uh, really appreciate these, these large donations and the small donations. I see the dollar and $2 donations flying by. They don't get pinned up at the top, but every single penny that you guys are giving, I'm deeply appreciative of it. Thank you. Um, Hi, how are you? Gave four ninety nine pounds, four pounds ninety nine. I believe how they would say it. Sorry. Uh, hi, Babish. Have a wonderful Christmas. God bless. Well done on the fundraising. Thank you. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Uh, Joshua Marshall says ho- happy holidays. Always willing to help out a great cause. Ten dollars. Thank you so much, Joshua. It's very very kind. Um, we got ten dollars coming in from Marin Morales. Uh, your video is the best part of my week. Happy holidays from San Francisco. Thank you. Happy holidays to you, Marin, and thank you for your donation. We got five Canadian dollars from Orthez. Uh, you and Brad have inspired me to get cooking again. I'm signing this while cooking soup and making my, waiting for my sauerkraut to finish. Been two weeks. Hey, congratulations. Good job cooking. I'd love to know what kind of soup you're making, but whatever it is, I hope it comes out great. And thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, all the way from Canada, no less. My sister just turned 12, says Sir Digo, and she loves your videos. Shout out. Shout her out. Her name's Hannah Banana. I don't think that's her real name, but I'll shout her out. Absolutely. Especially since you gave so generously to the cause. Hannah Banana, happy birthday. Happy 12th birthday. 
and I'm glad you're watching the show. Thank you so much. And thank your, uh, your brother or your sister, whoever this is, who just uh, gave $5 to a very worthy cause. Juan Barzalo gave $5 and says, shout out to you for making so many of us smile all the time. Let me know if you ever need a Spanish translator for some secret South American recipe. I'll hit you up, man. Thank you so much, and thank you for the donation. $5 from Richard Shosky again. Hey, what's up, man? What's your most recent tat? What's the story behind it? I went over this earlier. I'll just hit it very quickly uh, just because I know we're trying to wrap up here. This is the gavel from, um, from the West Wing, uh, Oliver Babish. My pseudonym is named after a character from the West Wing portray portrayed by Oliver, Oliver Platt. And uh, he's most famous for smashing a tape recorder with a gavel. And so I got that gavel tattooed uh, uh, two weeks ago. And the hair is just starting to grow back. By the time we get back from the holidays, this arm will look normal again. It'll stop looking so freaky. I'm going to get up off my knees for a second. Circle jerk. <laughs> I have $10. Uh, a tenner for the soup kitchen. Happy holidays to you and anyone, everyone here. Thank you, circle jerk. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. They're really going to appreciate that. Robin Fox gave five Canadian dollars and Merry Christmas from Canada, eh? Why do you refer yourself as daddy? Because everybody else calls me daddy. Why not? Thank you so much for your, gen for your generosity. Adam Colerio. Colero. Uh, Merry Christmas from the UK, buddy. Merry Christmas, Adam. Admiral 2003 gave five dollars. You inspired and taught this college student how to cook and it's how I've bonded with my mom ever since my dad passed. Keep it up, Babs. That's really lovely to hear, man. I'm sorry that your dad passed, and I'm really happy that uh, you're cooking uh, and bonding with your mom like that. That's great. Um, thanks, man. Thank you for your generosity, and keep your head up and keep cooking. Uh, Young Gun 995, five bucks for the soup. Thank you, Young Gun. He Heather McBride, five dollars. Uh, hey, Babish, you inspired me to get in the kitchen experiment with recipes I thought I'd never try. Merry Christmas. That's lovely to hear. Keep it up, Heather. I'm sorry I'm burning through these, but they're coming in faster, and I can read them. Daniel Taylor gave $5. You, ins you have inspired me to cook more. I'd also like to say thank you for making me happy. You definitely helped with my depression. That's lovely to hear, man. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to help with that. Cooking really helped with my depression, and um, what helped a lot more was getting the help that I needed. So if you need help, please go seek it, um, because you don't have to beat this alone. You can, you can, um, you can invest in yourself and, and uh, do something to, to try and beat it for good. Uh, so just keep your chin up and keep keep cooking. And if you need help, please, please get it. And thank you for your generosity. Daniel Brevard gave $5 and said, love your work and love the cause. From one cook who learned through the internet to another. Thanks to you and Chef John for furthering my knowledge. Thank you for your, for your generous contribution. And thank you to Chef John, who also taught me how to cook. Because he's been... He's been putting recipes on the internet since, since all recipes was, uh, first became a thing. So he, he's been doing this for a while, and he's, he's, he's a huge source of knowledge on the internet. Dominic Perna gave $10 and said, I love the vlog. Thank you. Uh, I'll just quietly leak this right here. Anybody who's still watching right now will, will, will learn that the, uh, the new show is going to be a vlog. Uh, and I won't say about what. It's, I mean, it's going to be about... It's going to it's going to be following me in my day to day, but there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff going on. So uh, keep your eyes peeled in early 2019 for the new Babish vlog. Tez Dahl gave $10, said Merry Christmas. Thanks for all the tasty food stuffs. Anytime, Tez Dahl. Really appreciate it. Uh, Crickula gave 109, I can't remember that currency. Uh, oh, Swedish. Um, thanks. Thank you so very much from Stockholm, Sweden. Your videos really got me into cooking. Hopefully this will help some. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, and thank you so much for your very kind donation, Curricula. Greek girl, you just gave $5. Hey, Bab Babish, I'm a viewer from Georgia, the country. Thank you for the clarification. I would have assumed Georgia, the state, because I'm a dumb American. Love your videos. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Greek girl. I'm going to read these last two, and I think, I think we're going to call it a night. Paul Phillips just gave $10. Please give a shout-out to my daughter, Maggie. She loves your show and is a great young chef herself. Hey, Maggie Phillips, your dad just uh, 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 asked me to give you a shout-out. Keep cooking. Thank you for watching the show, and thank you uh, to your dad. Uh, thank you to your dad for a very generous donation to a very good cause. Keep cooking, Maggie. Thank you for watching. Chad Marquette just gave $10. Thank you so much. And Bridget Jones. Bridget Jones? I wonder if that's your real name. Just gave $20, said, Happy Holidays, Babish. Your videos are so good for coming down from an anxiety attack and convincing said anxious nugget me to eat. Thank you for doing what you do. That's lovely to hear. I, uh, myself, I, I suffer from uh, uh, anxiety attacks and panic attacks. If, I think that might be the same thing. I'm not sure. But um, that's really, really nice to hear that um, 
I could have any effect in that, in that kind of situation because I know how absolutely hellish it is. I know that it feels like you're dying and it's horrible. And um, I'm very happy that I could be of any service in that situation. We got one more and then I'm going to call it. Um, so thank you again, Bridget Jones. Thank you for a very generous donation. And thank you for telling me that about yourself. I really appreciate it. Wolf Hop gave 10, gave 10 euros and said, Merry Christmas from Lübeck, Germany. I enjoy your show very much. Thank you for your generosity and thank you for watching. We've got two more. I'm going to try to burn through these. Bezian Sejdu gave five Canadian dollars and said, Merry Christmas and happy holidays from Canada and Kosovo. Very cool. Thank you so much for your generosity and thank you for watching and Merry Christmas to you and happy holidays. Julie Lopez said, my boyfriend Sean loves to cook and loves your show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for the donation. And with that, guys, I'm going to call it. I'm going to hop down here and say goodnight. Thank you guys so much, uh, everybody, for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for your incredible gen generosity. I don't know how much we raised tonight, but it's got to be a substantial amount. And all that money, uh, all my, my revenue from it is going to be going directly to St. Joseph's Soup, Soup Kitchen in the East Village. And your money's going to go into the mouths of people who really need it. And so thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful holiday. Whatever you celebrate, if you celebrate or not, I hope you have a lovely break. Um, I hope you have a lovely time of year with your family, with your friends, or by yourself if that's what you want. And I hope you have an amazing new year. I'm not going to see you on live streams until, until the next year, but you can expect new episodes of Binging and Basics and Binging again. Binging on Christmas Day, Basics between Christmas and New Year's, and then a new episode of Binging again on New Year's Day. So you can expect the schedule to resume as normal, and then after that we'll be doing a live stream in the new year. So I will see you guys in 2019. I'll see you a couple times via the show uh, before then, but it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys tonight as always. Uh, here's to you. Cheers. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy whatever it is that you're celebrating. Happy New Year. And I'll see you guys next year. Thank you guys so much tonight. This is absolutely amazing. And... Um, yeah, have a great night. Have a great half. Have a great, safe, happy, and healthy New Year. Good night, guys.